Hello and welcome to another CS Tutor Center video. Today we're going to talk about the problem duplicate zeros. But before we get started, if you are liking these videos, please subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel, it lets me know that you would like me to make more of these videos. As a result, I will go ahead and make more of them. Okay, let's get started. So the problem says, given a fixed length integer array R, duplicate each occurrence of zeros, shifting the remaining elements to the right. Note that elements beyond the length of the original array are not written. Do the above modification to the input array in place and do not return anything. So let's look at example one. In example one, we can see that there are three zeros. And if we were to insert a zero next to each zero, it would shift the elements to the right. It would shift them to the right such that these two would go outside of the array. So we'd be left with these values here. Let's look at this next one. We see there's no zeros in that one, so there's nothing to do here. Let's take a look at the constraints. So the constraints say that array R will always have at least one element. So we don't have to worry about null checks and we don't have to worry about if the array is empty. Next, the values in the array are between zero and nine. Okay, so let's think about this problem conceptually. We'll head over to the blackboard. Here's the problem from example one. And when we look at this problem, what we want to do is count up the number of zeros. So let's do that. We can see that we have three zeros here. And as a result, um, if we wanted to put three zeros in here, the array size would end up being three bigger than what it currently is. But remember that the problem said to not write beyond the array. So we'll make sure and not make this array larger because we got to do it in place. So we're not going to write beyond the array. Okay, so how can we solve this problem? If we do it in place, we know we're going to be overwriting existing values. If we create another array to keep track of all the values that we don't want to lose so that we can solve this problem, we won't be doing it in place. We'll be creating extra space. So that's not going to be a valid answer. If we think about this problem, about how we have these zeros and how that's going to change this array, then we can think that whatever values we have um, towards the end that are going to get shifted off of this array, we could use that as some temporary space that we can write to. So in other words, when we, let me duplicate this here, and I'll put this right up here so we see what our original is. If we add these zeros in here, we can see that that got pushed off um, and they, that gets lost. So if the five and the zero is gonna get lost anyway, we know that this could potentially be a place where we can make use of some temporary space without creating extra array values or allocating new space, I mean. So this area, it doesn't matter if we lose those values because they're gonna get lost anyway. Okay, that's, that's something interesting for us to think about. Let's think about, what else can we think about? Well, we have the arrays, we have three here and we need a copy. When we saw our other previous two pointer problems, we saw that the one, one pointer um, kept track of some value we wanted to point at and another pointer kept track of some value we needed to maybe modify. Um, so we could use that type of thinking here as well. So why don't we do this? Why don't we put a uh, put our two pointers down. So I'll put a pointer at the end and let's say I put a pointer down here 
at our imaginary end. And then um, how do how would I get that? Well, I would say that j is going to equal the r dot length. Minus 1 to get us to 7, plus the zeros to get us to 10. And then the i is just OK. <clears throat> now what we, what we would want to do now is what we could do is we could say copy whatever i is pointing at to whatever j is pointing at. If j is in a spot where you can copy to, remember we're not copying past the array, so j is currently not in a spot we can copy to. Okay, and then what we could do is we could we could move this down, and if there's a if this is pointing at a zero, we know that we would have copied to two spots. So if this is in a place we can copy to, we'd copy that again here. It's not, so we don't copy anything, and then this moves down, and then that moves down, and then let's do this again. Let's say that. Um, is J in a place we can copy to? If it was, copy that 5, but it's not, so uh, we don't copy. That moves up. This isn't pointing to a 0, so we don't need to copy a second time, so this moves up. Um, and then, is J in a spot we can copy to? Yes, it is. So let's copy that um, 4 to over here. Now, before I do that, I want to show something. Begin with the end in mind. That's just what I'm going to say here. So let's see what the end looks like. Ah, great. Looks like we're on the right track. Because if I copy this 4 to the 0, look at that. And then this moves down 1, and then the I moves down one. Is the J in a spot we can copy to? Yes, it is. So copy that zero to it. Move this down one. And is the I point to a zero? Yes, it is. So we're going to do the copy again. The J is somewhere it can copy to. So that's good. So we're going to copy again. And we'll move this down one. And move the I down one. Is the J in a spot we can copy to? Yes, it is. So copy that 3 to it. Move the J down 1. And then move the I down 1. Is the J somewhere we can copy to? Yes, it is. So copy that 2 to it. And move the J down 1. And move that I down 1. Is the J somewhere we can copy to? Yes, it is. So copy that 0 to it. Move the J down one. Is that I pointing at a zero? Yes, it is. So let's do that copy again. Because the J is also at a spot we can copy to. So move the J down one. Move the I down one. OK, our, the way we're going to stop doing this is when the, when the I and the J equal each other. So they equal each other here. So we stop the loop. Okay, so let's go write some code, and as we're writing it, we will think about this problem. So let me um, let me reset all this. Get rid of those zeros to get back to the um, starting problem. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is count these zeros. So let's go count those. So we can make this a little bit bigger. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so zeros. Okay, so we got our zero count, and then our j was going to be the r dot length minus one plus the zeros. 
And then why don't we just go ahead and do a for loop instead of a while loop actually. We will say i equals r dot length minus one and then we will say that j equals r dot length. I'll just copy this here. And then we say we, we'll keep on doing that as long as i does not equal j. And then that i always goes down by one um, each loop. OK, so we said we need to check to see if j is in a location we can copy to. That's what we'll do with this if statement. And if it is, then we go ahead and copy to it. And then we subtract one from the j, and then we check to see if if i is pointing to a zero. And if it is pointing to a zero, let's now check to see if j points to somewhere we can copy to. And if that's the case, then let's go ahead and copy to it. And then um, we subtract j by one. Okay. So. So that's it, actually. So let's run this. Let me let me uh, <clears throat> shrink out for you here so you can see this easier for a second. Okay, there you go. Let's run this. Whoops. Okay, I didn't put a semicolon here. Where did I miss the semicolon? Uh, not equal to, no, it's okay. Expected at the end of, did I put, I put my commas, right? Int i equals r dot length minus one r, oh, oops. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then we'll run it. Okay, great. All right, so that passes. Now we'll head over to the Python. Okay, so zeros equals zero. Okay, and then I'll just do this. Okay, if uh, the length of j, if j is less than that, then we can, we know we can copy to it. And then um, j subtracted by one. Let's check to see if r points to zero. If it does, let's check to see if we can copy to it. If so, let's go ahead and copy to it. And then subtract that down by one if that was the case. And then subtract i by one. Um. <clears throat> Oops, moving just a little too fast here and not in an interview, I would think a little bit better, but I'm just gonna move in fast. All right, so Network error, fantastic. Okay, it's, uh huh. That's why I don't have the paid version, so there you go. By the way, in your interview, um, you're gonna wanna like, you're you're gonna wanna when you you know how we talked through it on the blackboard. You're gonna to wanna to come up with like more than just like one example. You're gonna to wanna to come up with like, it's always gonna have like maybe four examples to do your edge cases. 
And then you're going to run through it real quick, like verbally, just to make sure that any little bugs like that aren't happening. You would pick up on that. And then, um, and then you'll code it up. And then you're going to talk about the big O. So in this case, um, it's linear, and you'll explain why. The reason why is because here we're going over, look at this, we have two for loops, right? But they're outside of each other. And in the worst case, it goes from, it goes over all of the elements of the, uh, elements of the array, all the elements of the array just once. So that's linear, okay? And then the space time complexity, well, we're not creating any variables that are dependent on the input. So it's a constant um, time complexity. And when I, so that's important the way I said that, because if you create some variable like that can get um, bigger in length, like an array, based off of the size of the array that came in, then it's gonna, your array, your algorithm is going to, the space is going to change depending on the size of this input that gets passed in. So then it wouldn't be constant. But we have a constant time complexity we have a linear big O space-time complexity, um, and our solution is accepted. So thank you for watching. If you are liking these videos, um, please subscribe to the channel so that I know that you're liking them and that you would like me to make more of them. And as a result, I'll go ahead and make more of them. All right, thank you. Have a nice day.